Hi guys, welcome to a Tale and welcome to Bruges. We are here for the day. Let's go and explore. My husband and I took the Eurostar from London to Brussels. You will see more of Brussels in next week's vlog. From Brussels, we took a one hour direct train to Bruges to see what it's all about. We stayed the night, ate chocolate, we went on a free walking tour, sailed on the canal and enjoyed Belgian waffles. Stay tuned to see it all. Wow, so our hotel was a literal one minute walk down there and here we are, right in the middle of Bruges. This place is amazing, what a great first impression, the bells are ringing. The atmosphere is so cool. Wow. Coming into here for a spot of lunch, we've seen that they do frit, so we thought. Let's give this a go. Look at these. These look amazing. So we are sitting at this beautiful church on the steps here while we eat our lovely Belgian fruit. staying at the Hotel Arcasia and it is right in the center of Bruges. It's so well situated, you literally go down there and you are in the main square. Hotel Arcasia. It's really nice in here. I'll put below how much we paid. Chandelier and then this is the reception. Here we go, this is our room. Ooh, this is good. King size bed. Little desk area. This is nice. Yeah, this will do us just fine. Let's have a look at the bathroom. This is random, a bit of a dressing room. And we've got the kettle and everything here. What's in here? Safe and fridge. This is the bathroom. Oh, wow. oh wait, the toilet's not in here though. That's in the other oh, room. Oh, is that in the other room? <laughs> cool. So the toilet is back through here, is it? And this door. Oh, it's good though that they've broken it. Oh yeah, there's the toilet. This will be lovely. We've got a little bit of a balcony in this hotel as well. This was actually our room, directly above reception, that window as well. I definitely recommend that hotel. So we actually got a taxi to the hotel. It was only a couple of minutes, it was 10 euros, but it just saved us taking the suitcase. Um, but otherwise it's a 20 minute walk if you did just want to walk it straight into Bruce city centre. So this is where you buy your boat ticket. And then the canal is just here. This is where you'll get on the boat. This is where you buy your tickets and then you just come down here and this is where the boat is for you to start your canal tour. Oh, <laughs> 
also something Bruges is famous for is its chocolate. And if you know me at all, you'll know how much I love chocolate. So we are here at the best chocolatier of the year called the Chocolate Line. And we're gonna see what it's all about, get some chocolates, and then we're gonna head this way to another chocolate shop. There's so many chocolate shops here, it's unbelievable. Best chocolatier of the year, 2023. Yeah. Oh, the smell of chocolate just hits you. It's such a great smell. So this is it. Look at all these little chocolates. Pina colada. Pina colada, wow. So many chocolates to choose from. Wow, marshmallows. Oh, there's a white one. I love that. Chocolate is God's apology for broccoli. <laughs> of course, size matters. No one wants a small piece of chocolate. How cool. So if your name starts with one of these letters, you can get a chocolate letter in your name. That's good, isn't it? Let's see what mine is. Oh, wow. That's amazing. So they have someone working and you can watch them. They're making chocolate lollipops. Apparently this chocolatier has the best hot chocolate. We'll have to try it because I do like my hot chocolates. We're going to go in here, check out some of the chocolates. Oh, look at these. So you can get a little tin house and fill it up with the chocolates you want. And it's just self-service. Pick a mix, it says. That's so good. Raspberry, orange. Look, a yeah. caramel marshmallow. Yeah. I'm gonna try one of these mellow cakes. They've got milk, white, and dark. It looks so good. So I bought the Belgian chocolate mallow cake. Real Belgian chocolate. This is a hard biscuit rather than a cake. Oh look, we've got the lace shop. This was famous for lace. When my mum was here in the 70s, she picked up some lace. So here's 2B. We've been recommended this. They have a beer wall. So we're gonna go and check it out. To be in Rouge, Booger. Oh, they've got Tintin up here and Snowy. Oh, oh all the memorabilia merchandise. Look at the Smurfs. The size of this beer wall. And it keeps going on. It's called Beer Wall Street. And there's even more. And there's more throughout here as well. Yeah. <laughs> Someone was waving at the camera. Wow, this is so cool. Yeah, it smells like a British pub in here. Yeah. You can smell the beer. Oh, next one. I love that the menu's just on strings from the ceiling. Right, what we got? Oh, it tells you all about the beers. Oh, they've got that Bougazot peach beer. Oh, coconut. Coconut beer, oh wow. We're gonna get the coconut one. We've got all the beers on tap there. Oh, he's making a flight. This place is so cool! Oh wow! <laughs> Trust you to get one that comes in a coconut. Mm, he's pushing me! Mm. Hello, coconut! <laughs> So Simon ordered a coconut beer and it came in a coconut. <laughs> this looks amazing and it's got a little coaster and everything. <laughs> Should we see what it tastes like? Oh, it's weird. Is it weird? Is it nice though? Yeah, it's alright. Right. They're weird. At first it's one like, um, like a coconut shampoo or something. <laughs> it tastes alright. Yeah. yeah. I just tried it. It's really nice. It doesn't really taste like beer. There's a little bit of an aftertaste of beer. Because I'm not really a beer. I don't drink beer. But it's really sweet, so it's a bit more cidery. It smells like suntan cream. It tastes a bit like cider and then a tiny bit 
the beer aftertaste. We were sitting on the stairs because there were no seats left. It's a very popular place. But now we've got this seat free. Best seat in the house. We've got these cozy, comfortable chairs. How nice is this? I know. And we've got a view of the canal and the beautiful buildings. I love the architecture here. Look at these buildings. This is such a cool place to come. Definitely recommend. Well, I definitely recommend going to 2B for a drink. It was so cool. Such a great experience. We've come into La Belgique Gourmand. So much chocolate here. When I tell you this town is full of chocolate shops, honestly, every third shop is a chocolate shop. I'm thinking of getting one of these Belgian chocolate slabs. They're 350 and it's got it's real Belgian chocolate. Oh, we're gonna get a couple of these as well. So I've picked up a Belgian chocolate slab and I'm gonna have a couple truffles as well. This one is raspberry, this is Grand Marnier, and this one is coconut and hazelnut. Coconut and hazelnut. Oh, okay, oh, thank, thank you. you. So you've got to get coconut and hazelnut. I'd like a caramel, yeah, thank you. We need to remember that that's the caramel. <laughs> and that's coconut hazelnut. Coconut hazelnut, you'll love that. Oh, I know, I just took a bite out of the caramel truffle that I bought. It is delicious, honestly. One of the best chocolates ever. So I'm trying my other truffle that I got. I got chocolate truffle and it is delicious. The chocolate's amazing. Not, not that I never thought I wouldn't like a Belgian chocolate. I'm really enjoying this. It's not too bitter, it's not too sweet. It's perfect. If we could run it, if we could run it back and do you wonder, if we could run it back, if we could run it For a late night stroll it's a little chilly so we went back to the hotel to get our coats loving bruges so far we're doing a proper walking tour of it in the morning so i'll show you a lot more then i know i've not really showed you much tonight uh, lots of the shops close early in bruges so definitely take that into account when you are here it was everything was shut around six o'clock so a lot of the chocolate shops all those kind of things were closed uh, they had all the bars and everything open till late but if you're wanting the shops they close at six and they only open at 10 as well. So we were planning to go to a famous hot chocolate shop in the morning, but it is closed until 10. So we're gonna do that after the walking tour. Ooh, the bells are going at the church. Good morning from Bruges. We are here in the main square in Bruges because this is the starting point for the free walking tour. We booked this with Legends Tour. I'll put the link below if you are interested. It is free but it does say that on average people tip 10 euros per person. So it's going to be really good. We'll hopefully see a bit more of the city and tell us a bit about the history and culture. I'll fill you in on anything interesting that they say. It is a little bit windy today though so I hope you can hear me okay. Here we go, so the Legends Tour umbrella has just gone up. That's that red umbrella, so we're gonna go over. That's the meeting point. <laughs> so that's that's how they say Bruges. Uh, now that you know, now that, uh, we can start talking. So welcome in Bruges, uh, everybody. You're standing in the morning thousands in Gothic architecture, you can always Recognized by the spiky towers with the dots on it. Spiky towers and dots, 99% of the time is going to be gothic architecture. Gothic architecture. So he's told us that that bell up there is rung by real people. It's manned by real people. 
and, and it's kind of like a, a, a piano keyboard but you bash it with yeah, your hands. Yeah, you bash it. So he's told us some history and stories about how Bruges came to be. The rich merchant of the area went to marry a princess from France. And yeah. That's how he came under French control. They said that Bruges had a lot of money because of salt. Uh, yeah, because of because salt on the fields. They couldn't grow crops, so they basically grew livestock, and that's why they became famous for wool, because they had a lot of sheep on the fields around. Oh, we're going in. This is exciting, isn't it? He also said something which I already knew, but he said that's where the word salary comes from, because you trade in salt. Ah. You get paid in salt, because salt is very uh, tradable. And that's where the salary... That's where the word salary comes from. The bear is a symbol of the city. It was um, that famous guy that married the princess. Um, Slaughter Rom. He killed the bear and that's why he got to marry him. And then you see a lion too. It's leading. Right? <laughs> it's like you guys. It's a tower. It's leading. They're currently playing La Vie en Rose. <laughs> Take a part. Spike tower with dots. Drop it, right? And then I'll let you the women's have been chilled up to make it extra strength. And the highest part of what they don't think. They were playing La Vie en Rose, and he was telling us how it's leaning because. Well, between the bricks, they used um, animal skin and whatever mortar to, to bind the bricks together. And over time, the leather and the animal skin has been perishing. Right. So the gap between the bricks is getting thinner. And it's starting and to it's lean. Starting to lean. We built it in three phases. So the bottom bit was the kind of whatever medieval, I think he said, kind of Roman style. Then it was Gothic because he said anything that's got towers with pointy bits on is Gothic. Yeah. And then after that was the next period. So it was it, that's why it's got three distinct levels. We've come to where we were on the boat yesterday on the canal because I have a feeling it's going to tell us about this tiny window. So this is the smallest gothic window in the world and they built it because um, it was to keep an eye on the dock workers. The so dock they, workers. So they didn't know whether or not they were being watched because they were stealing his money? Yeah, they were basically, it was, it's kind of like a spy window and they wouldn't know if they were being watched. Because the stained glass and the size of it yeah. stops you knowing whether there's your shadow behind them. Yeah, <laughs> that's clever because yeah, they used to work here and they wanted to make sure the workers weren't stealing. So this is where they'd get the hops or the, the shoots, he called it. Looking upon the second highest brickstone church tower in Europe. It's a long title, but it's a title. Yeah. But if you would compare like squares in Bruges with squares, let's say in Antwerp or Amsterdam or Paris or Cologne or whatever, then you can tell that there's not that many birds over here. They are all outside the city centre. How do we keep them out? Because in this tower, there's two falcons living. So this is the second oldest hospital in the world, 1120. He said if you were poor and you wanted work, you came to Bruges because yeah. you were looking for work and you didn't have anywhere to live, so you went to the hospital because it wasn't a hospital as in you were sick. It was a place to get food and board. But that's where the word hospital and hospitality comes from. It wasn't actually because you were ill. You just came here to get, to get a bed and a food. This was the old hospital and then this was the pharmacy. Yeah. And he said you, he'd have a symbol on you for what you would need from the hospital. And they'll give it to you because a lot of them were illiterate. illiterate. Yeah, so that's what the symbols on the side of the wall mean. Yeah, so there's X. X here. Yeah, they would just mark you with what you had wrong with you so that they knew what to dispense. And this is the only place in the world outside the Vatican that has a uh, Michelangelo, Ma Ma Michelangelo statue of mother and child. He said the other place was the Louvre but it's the Vatican giving it to the Louvre on loan, yeah. on loan to show how rich the Vatican is but he is the only place outside the Vatican that they have a Michelangelo and it was because at the time the Pope didn't like the statue that he made so sent him away and then as he was leaving he bumped into some merchants from Bruges who bought it off him and that's why it's here. The merchants gave it to this church as a sort of stairway to heaven. The tour guide is now taking us to his favourite place in the city he said. So we've just been inside this gated community 
He did say no cameras, but I am seeing people taking pictures. But there's gates in and gates out, and it's where women used to, it's a bit like a monastery. Women used to stay and they were safe, but they weren't nuns. Um, they were allowed to leave when they want, but the gates closed at six every night and they were safe. And it's carried on, it's still that to this day. It's not as strict now, but yeah. they still have just so, women in there. So we said it was called like a begging back in, back in niche. Yeah, it's interesting. It had it was a self-contained community. Yeah. It had a bakery. Its own church, its own livestock. Yeah. Oh, the boat came here as well. We're just walking the boat tour at the moment. He said, if you are in Bruges, you have to go to this chapel. He said, it's the most beautiful chapel in the world, he said. <laughs> Might be slightly biased, but this is also where there's a cloth with Jesus' blood on it. This is the town hall. So he told us about the chocolate shops, not this particular one, but he said to look out for the best and most authentic chocolates here is to look for this sign. This is the proof that it's in the Guild of Bruges Chocolatiers. So this sign means that it uses traditional recipes and it is made on site. So that is what to look out for, for authentic Belgian chocolate. Oh, they do look good. Oh, they do look good. Maybe we come back here and get some chocolates. Yeah, for souvenirs. Yeah. So he said the only chocolate shop with the exception of not having that guild uh, sign is the chocolate shop called the Chocolate Line. We went in the other day, Whoa. it doesn't have the sign outside, it's not in the guild, and that is because this creator doesn't have traditional chocolate recipes. It's more artisan, it has, it's a bit more experimental, but he still said you've got to try the chocolate here at the Chocolate Line. So that one, the Chocolate Line, was voted the best chocolatier of the year, 2023. So we are on our way to try the best hot chocolate ever, apparently. And, oh, it has the guild, let me show you. So this is it, place to be to drink hot chocolate. And it actually does have a guild sign, which is amazing. We know that it's gonna be all traditional. Let's try this amazing hot chocolate. Taste the best hot chocolate in town. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Oh, look at the chocolate. So it's great to know that because of that sign, it means it's all built in house, it's all traditional Belgian recipes. Ooh, it smells so good in here. It says, welcome to our tea rooms. Let's go up. Look at this, it's like a little house. <laughs> oh, look at this. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, do you want to sit there? Yeah. Oh, wow. This is so cute. With the whole uh, cup of chocolate inside of the milk, okay. you stir it well and then you can enjoy it. The cup's also made of chocolate so that you can also be served the, the milk as well. Great. And those are just some biscuits and uh, oh. chocolates to enjoy. Lovely. Uh, Look at this. This looks so exciting. So you pour these into here and the cup is made out of chocolate as well. I would dump it all in if it was me. Oh my gosh, you have It's good chocolate too. Can you feel the chocolate or is it breaking up? I can't even feel it. Yeah, it's breaking up. Breaks up. It's needs more chocolate, doesn't it? <laughs> wow, our waffles have arrived. Sam has gone for hot cherry and whipped cream. And I went for just whipped cream. I went for plain because I wanted to really try what it tastes like. Oh my God. Here we go. <laughs> wow. 
And it's great because it's actually not too sweet. Neither, neither the cream nor the waffles are too sweet. Look how much cream you get. Yeah. The whole can. Oh my gosh, this waffle is so tasty. You're right. It's not super sweet, even though it looks it. Oh, I've got one left. <laughs> Go on. You should try the um, cup. Yeah, we should eat it. Um, this waffle is going down so easily. It's so light and fluffy. It looks super sweet, but it's really not. It tastes amazing. And this hot chocolate is incredible. The only thing I was a little bit disappointed with was more milk. <laughs> they should have given me more milk. It was only up to about there. <laughs> But yeah, it was, it's really good so far. How are your cherries? Really, really good. Really good? You've nearly finished? Yeah. Sam got coffee as well, is that okay? Iced coffee, yeah, it's very nice. Every single thing is just amazing, you have to come here. We are ordering some chocolates. We're ordering a couple of boxes of these for my family. And Sam is getting some as well for us. Thank you. What would you say your favourite is? What? My favourite uh, lavender tea. Ooh. Yeah, can I try the creme brulee, please? And, oh, actually, passion fruit. Thank you. <laughs> so we just bought some official Belgian chocolate, some to take home as well for family. So one of the stories I did want to let you know about that was on the walking tour, he told so many stories I couldn't possibly tell you them all, but there was one that I just found fascinating that I thought I'd try and retell, probably definitely not as well as him. So basically in the story, I can't remember the names and where they were from, but there was a princess who married somebody royal in Austria and they lived apart, uh, had Maximilian, kids. Maximilian he was called. It was called Maximilian, yeah. And basically she unfortunately died and um, so he came to Bruges and then ended up raising taxes which obviously nobody liked and then to pay for a war against the Ottoman Empire yeah he wanted to fight the Ottoman Empire so people were paying more taxes weren't happy about it and um, revolted and his friend the mayor was in charge and he was captured and tortured and they agreed that there wouldn't be any more taxes but then Maximilian came back with an army and pretty much did a siege around the whole city and just really crippled the town. It went from being rich one day to poor the next because they got rid of the city walls, so that's why it's not a walled city anymore. It, they got rid of all the famous industries. They moved them out of Bruges into other cities in Belgium so they moved them to Ghent, Antwerp, all those kind of places so Bruges weren't making anything, weren't creating any money for themselves. So it just meant that Bruges was frozen in time and it does have this magical feeling about it. It, it just feels old and preserved and authentic. It's so different to anywhere I've been before. So yeah, I just loved that story. It, it made me understand Bruges a lot more. And that's what's so good about those tours. So we are just waiting for a taxi to take us to the train station. We're going back to Brussels now. It's only an hour train journey. So if you are coming to Brussels, I highly recommend going to Bruges either for the day, you can come overnight like we did and just get to explore a different city. It's only an hour by train. It was direct, all really easy. I'm so sad to be leaving Bruges. We've had such a good time. We have to come back. We've got our train tickets from Bruges to Brussels. It was eight euros each. Back to Brussels we go. I am gonna finish this video here in the main square of Bruges. Thank you so much for watching this video. We've had such a wonderful time here. I really hope you enjoyed the vlog. Please like it if you did. It helps my channel so, so much. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time. Bye.